Good morning from uh, Southern California again. This is one of our AI Med Talks. I'm so excited to have two very special guests from uh, London. We have Sebastian Orselen, who is heads up the Biomedical Engineering Department at King's College London. And then we have Craig, an old friend from uh, NVIDIA. So um, Sebastian, you're in one of the busiest places in the world right now for the pandemic. And um, we're talking about your department just embracing the pandemic and helping our frontline clinicians. And I'm a clinician, very jealous of your situation, your ecosystem to have biomedical engineering so close by. Tell us about your ecosystem and how you pivoted during the pandemic. Yeah, sure. So um, um, we have what can be seen as a as a very exciting environment for engineers of being fully embedded into an hospital environment, which became slightly more challenging when you are in the middle of a pandemic uh, within an hospital, uh, having um, by now over 300 uh, ICU beds uh, to treat a patient with COVID as being one of the largest hospital uh, to treat uh, our highly infectious uh, patients in the country. Uh, but um, we've been uh, taking advantage of having not only our infrastructure, but a lot of our staff on site uh, to support the pandemic from manufacturing of PPE, uh, manufacturing of hand sanitizer, uh, supporting development of, um, of um, new um, low cost um, ventilators, um, up to the development of predictor models of, uh, of the, the way the pandemic is, is expanding, not only in fact in the UK, but as well in collaborators at NGS in the US uh, with, uh, with some companies on big data uh, analytics, uh, where it's very close to, in fact, some of the work that uh, we've been doing with NVIDIA on, on artificial intelligence. Uh, so it's a, it, it can be seen as very exciting, but as well, it's quite, it's quite challenging because you are talking about mixing engineers uh, on the front line with your NHS colleagues and, and being able to, of course, always put patient first um, and, and, and getting research and innovation fully embedded in, in what is an active uh, hospital. And, you know, you cannot delay uh, patient care. So you have to have a good balance between where innovation lies or stops sometimes and yeah. when will patient take over. So one of the nice dividends from this pandemic is it kind of unleashed the the willingness to collaborate and have open source and just humans against viruses now. So no, how, how has that um, affected you and NVIDIA's collaborative uh, open source network? Well, it's clearly, I mean, what, what is quite surprising uh, is, you know, we, well, is it surprising? I think it's a good demonstration that, uh, you know, uh, it's, as I like to call, collaboration in adversity. In fact, we launched Monai during the pandemic. Uh, we haven't actually lost any energy uh, uh, of the team. Uh, you know, we've been having uh, video conferencing with the developers, uh, not only from NVIDIA and King's, but across many different institutions, having board meetings, um, uh, actually chaired by one of your um, um, uh, US colleagues, uh, Stephen Edward uh, from ITK, um, mm -hmm. and really making sure that you know, we, we do provide those technology open source to, uh, to, uh, to, to the rest of our, um, you know, colleagues um, uh, worldwide. But that's been an activity that, to be honest, we've been doing for many, many years. Uh, and, and Mona is just a new, a new generation of, of, of what will be, what we believe, uh, the most versatile, agile, and robust platform to deliver uh, medical image analytics or analysis technology uh, using using artificial intelligence, and and it was really important for us when we speak about collaboration that we don't we don't create any barrier between industry and and university. So this private public partnership, uh, which is really central to us, we 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 work really closely with Nvidia to make sure that it will be open source. We're not going to create any extra layers of complexity. Um, and we can openly and transparently provide all of those uh, technology uh, to, to as many people as we can. Uh, yeah. So it's, uh, it's actually very much resonating with what's happening during the pandemic in terms of people becoming more and more collaborative. I think yeah. it's quite outstanding when you see the amount of research done globally right now. Uh, and people um, talking to uh, new colleagues. As I say, I'm working very closely now with uh, Professor Andy, um, Andy Fang in um, uh, uh, Chan, sorry, Andy Chan in, 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 in the US, in NGH, on the Zoe app, and we never met face to face. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, and we met across this pandemic to actually support this, uh, this, this prediction models. Um, What's uh, 
extraordinary. Yeah, it's going to bring out what's best in humans to, to unify and uh, fight this uh, very daunting enemy. Now, um, Craig and I um, were talking earlier about the exciting development of infrastructure uh, in, the, in our closing minute or two. Can one of you tell us about the infrastructural changes at uh, NVIDIA to accommodate this collaboration? Yeah, so I think, first of all, I think Sebastian makes a brilliant point. It had to be open source. Yeah. Um, so this, this is to do with the community and building on, you know, the expertise, the clinical expertise. And, you know, Seb talks about the front line, uh, you know, what is happening there and being able to translate that into software that can support some of those massive challenges that are going on. And NVIDIA is bringing in the hardware and software expertise, but, you know, in as well, King's College London and the team there, they've got enormous amounts of hardware and software expertise. So it's not just us, you know, bringing that in. It's a collaboration where we can talk and discuss about how the software and hardware is working together. How do we embed that into the clinical pathways, clinical workflows? So it's not a disruptive to those clinical workflows that it is enhancing that decision making process. So NVIDIA's technology is, you know, whether it's around the DGX technology or the Volta technology, is a, there to really kind of super optimize those algorithms that are running and um, to analyze that data in very, very fast um, kind of process so that it can be clearly understood very, very quickly and then delivered very, very quickly to where it's needed, whether it's at the point of care or whether it's in some triage process but it's handed over very quickly and it's, you know, obviously with the accuracy that it needs to as well. But yeah. Seb's team and NVIDIA's team work very closely on all layers from the clinical down all the way down to the hardware. In fact, oh. there was a, I think, very exciting point, if I may say, Anthony, uh, which is, which has never been so important, is, is we embedded into a platform the capability of, of federated learning, yeah. which is all about you move the model rather than the data. And when right. you're in a situation that you, you, you cannot gather the data into one centralized place, in any case right now, and in most of the people, you can't even get directly to those data. So having a mechanism when you can sit here and you know in your office or at home, um, and you can test your model across 10, 15, 100 different hospitals across many, across many countries without yeah. having to you know, deal with any of the data governance challenges um, GDPR and others, uh, you know, it completely changed the way that people would be able to do research. And we decided to embed the concept of federated learning right at the core of Monai as well. Well, as a clinician who is facing this disease, I want to thank Craig and Nvidia as well as Sebastian and all the great academic work you're doing. It really makes us feel much better about fighting this very daunting and invisible enemy. So thank you very much for our talk this morning. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.